on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Vile Files, recapping Bachelor in Paradise after missing last year. We finally get our favorite summer guilty pleasure, and we have a great episode for you today. The wonderful Kathy Kelly is back in studio. Hello. To help us break down all things Bachelor in Paradise. Kathy, welcome. Thank you. I feel like uh, Bachelor in Paradise is having an identity crisis this year, and I think I'm here for it. How so? Uh, everything. <laughs> have you not watched the episode? Yeah, well, well, yeah. <laughs> David Spade knows not what he's doing, yeah. and I, I love it. I, I was very confused by the voiceovers. I was like, who is this person? Oh. Very aggressively doing a little John, like, and then I realized the that it was little John like, <laughs> doing it. But yeah, it's I, I'm very confused, and I think like my senses are on overload, but I love it. It's great. We'll, uh, we'll break it all down with Kathy, and in just a few minutes, we have a great podcast for you tomorrow with the hit boy band CNCO. Uh, a really fantastic uh, episode, if I don't say so myself. Uh, a great group <laughs> of guys. Um, if you're interested in the boy band lifestyle, uh, it's a pretty honest conversation. They're fun uh, talking about their lives, uh, what it's like to be a rock star. Pretty, uh, pretty fun episode. Um, and uh, you won't want to miss that. Uh, other than that, uh, what else? Anything else that we really have immediate to talk about? Should we just get into breaking down paradise? Let's just let's just break down paradise. Let's let's go. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. So David Spade. David Spade, great. Also, I feel like he doesn't even know what he's doing there. <laughs> yeah, nor, right? nor does so he. <laughs> he's just like whatever. I'm a fan of the show. Like. You know, why not? Honestly, I out of all of the matches that could potentially happen this season, I want to see David Spade and Demi. That felt like it oh. had the most chemistry out of it. There was a lot of yeah. potential flirting between David and the women showing up. Yeah. Yes. And, and He's like, you are you are very in shape. Go to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like he... Like after Demi, I mean, we're cutting to the end, but after like Demi showed up and left, there was like a there was tension between them. There was a a, a like a, a he didn't know a what nice to, he grin. Was like, he's yeah. like, oh, he's like someone that actually made me laugh, and like he was giddy. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe maybe there's I think love. That it's a match made in paradise. Yeah, and uh, obviously age is just a number this season, um, and so maybe that will yeah. be the case with uh, David Spade and uh, Demi as well. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, so we, uh, we open up, obviously we get a bunch of intro packages, uh, from people kind of giving us a preview on who we're going to see, who stood out to you, Kathy, uh, on, uh, on any of these intro packages, if, if anything, and just kind of a reminder for people, like, especially like Kelsey, who we haven't seen in a couple of yeah. seasons. Um, I mean, I remember Kelsey was here like right before pandemic, right yeah, after Peter's that's season, right. and she was talking about how she wanted to go on Paradise and was bummed that like, obviously we were in that that stage where it was, oh yeah, we was have two like weeks right of before, shutdown, yeah. you'll be in your house for two weeks. Um, but they kind of had this idea that no one was going to go to Mexico and what that would look like. But I'm, I'm interested. I feel like it's, you know, a lot of people from the last couple seasons who maybe didn't have the most TV time. Um, but I, I mean, out of all the people, I think, um, Tejuan, I'm so excited oh. to see her this season. And like, it's like I was saying, like bachelor in paradise, having this identity crisis of like, we've got existential crisis is happening on the beach. We've got, you know, girls dating other guys, uncles. And like, it's just it's, <laughs> game of Thrones up in here. It's fabulous. I mean, listen, I, I love paradise for a lot of reasons, both, uh, filming it was fun watching it. You know, it can get exhausting recapping The Bachelor and Bachelorette for the way it is shot mm -hmm. and just how it is in a completely unrealistic environment yeah. that um, the show is, you know, the show takes itself very seriously. It's very earnest about like the rules of the show and yeah. therefore the audience does. And then we get into these kind of weird kind of. Uh, discussions about like what's normal when you have one person dating 30 people, the power dynamic is inequitable and off, et cetera, et cetera. And as viewers, we watch it and, and we want like, especially in the bachelorette, we want our guys to be totally okay with being like, Hey man, just go talk to her. It's totally cool. And that's perceived as gentlemanly mm -hmm. and like unproblematic where in life you wouldn't even want your guy to be okay with you 
like having him like share you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And so Paradise, we, I think it's fun. It's it's more of a comedy. And then I think we definitely get to see people's real personalities come definitely. out. They're not put in these silos because they're not afraid of doing and saying the right thing. There's a little bit more space for people. They make fun of yeah. themselves. Like yeah. that's, that's what Paradise is. And I think it's, you know, full throttled this season with having David Spade, Lil John, like all of the the guest cameos that they're teasing for this, this season, I feel like. And everyone's been so cooped up that they're just ready for it. Like they said, the most makeouts on this episode of the first first episode of a season ever um i don't know it's i'm excited to but see also what it's like be. you mentioned the voiceover it sets the tone totally for what the new bachelor in paradise is that voiceover <laughs> was like it attacked on the senses <laughs> like i right? i felt like i needed like shots to listen voiceover yeah is yeah. it little john like i right but or it is it someone trying what paradise is as opposed to what paradise was yeah but that's, well it's a, i don't know about that i mean paradise when I was on it, it was more of a comedy. Now they've literally made a, I mean, I know this to be true production wise. They wanted to get, have it be more of a drama and less of a comedy. So oh. I would disagree with that. I don't know. Like but that voiceover makes it more comedy to me. And sure, so I mean, like I thought David spades and all that of it. I all. thought this episode was very funny for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying like, I don't, I don't know about like the, the, the voice is like a, some sort of subliminal message of what we're going to, yeah. I mean, that's the the other thing too is I feel like Bachelor has been around for so long. Bachelor in Paradise, what is this? The 5th, 6th, 7th season? I don't know. Something like 7, maybe but 6, like, 7, yeah. In that time frame, the last few years, so many other reality dating shows have come around that they have to reinvent themselves or like they have to to lean into that more. I totally agree. I don't know like I don't know if they're very good at doing that. I'd yeah. like to see the franchise do more of that, specifically when it comes to the Bachelor and mm -hmm. the Bachelor and, and Bachelorette. But it's tough, right? Like, you know, there's a you have a legacy show mm -hmm. that's been ultra successful for how many years? It still wins Monday nights, despite mm -hmm. you know ratings are different now. They you know, like there's oh, just totally, more yeah. content, so it's hard to. They still win mm -hmm. on Monday nights, so. Um, you get, you know, it's the same thing over and over the same playbook. And I, I do wish the show, especially with the bachelor and bachelorette would stop pretending it's not a TV show. I think they do a much better on bachelor in paradise of, of that. But, um, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. There comp, there's more competition, uh, other shows, especially with streaming platforms like are doing well, like bachelor, might be the only reality TV show that really crushes on network television, but like I, it's different now because now you can put like Fuckboy Island on HBO Max and yeah. and Too Hot to Handle on Netflix, and they do very well. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I think they have to definitely compete. So I, I do. Th I, that's interesting. Knowing that, like, I wonder, and I don't have the answer how much they might have taken that into account when when editing or filming Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah. I mean, did we get the the normal like Baywatch intros or whatever those are like old no. school? Yeah, they yeah. cut those this year. I yeah. would be willing my guess is you'll you'll see them see them second episode. Second episode. Okay. If if I could I'm pretty sure that's always been the case yeah. where they have the intro and the second episode people get into their paradise characters and yeah. you'll you'll see that I, but, but maybe they they could have completely taken it but i don't think it's ne just because we didn't see it today doesn't necessarily mean we're not going to see it yeah i would suspect and that was such a fun part of of the show i hope they keep doing that yeah but. no i mean as, as far as like people that stood out i feel like grocery store joe's getting a lot of attention from the girls um obviously we saw him have like his little crisis on the beach but it reminds me a lot of um derek Derek P energy from a couple seasons ago where like he's coming back after a failed relationship to try to not recreate what he had before, but like, it's a very yeah, weird. Yeah. Wells was on here recapping and he mentioned that he thought someone could, you know, get a bachelor edit from paradise. I'm almost certain that must be grocery store Joe from what we're seeing. Episode one. I mean, I, I loved Joe this episode. That I thought there's a real honesty and earnestness of, you could see him really struggling. I think it's very relatable. Yeah. I, I had uh, feelings like that when I went back on Paradise for my two. It's just like, this is this is this is probably a stupid yeah. idea. Um, and Face I face the see, trauma head on. <laughs> yeah, and so I think you see that with Joe, and I found it very relatable. He 
he's probably one of the best people at owning his awkwardness yeah. and leaning into it and not pretending he's not being awkward. But and that comes across very charming. The authenticity behind yeah. it is so endearing. And I think, you know, I would say like, I definitely felt like America was going to fall in love with him on this season. If they already had, I didn't watch his season of dancing with the stars, but um, he obviously was a fan favorite from, you know, even his season of having a couple episodes before he got eliminated. Uh, on no, the not even a couple episodes. He had a, was it night one? <laughs> night one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, in life, Joe's a great guy. He's, he, you know, he's just very, yeah. he is, he is very comfortable with himself. And I think that shows, and, and I hope that we see more of that. Obviously, age was discussed a lot. Well, this totally. episode. Yeah. And, I mean, to have people that are 40 and then to have people that are early, yeah, I mean, early 20s. It, it brings a really interesting wrinkle because you have a bunch of men from Claire's who are casted for Claire, mm -hmm. right? And Claire was what 38 39 when 39 she, we, so when she was the bachelorette so you have naturally older men and then uh and then you have uh a lot of women from matt season and yeah. matt was in his you know what 26 27 and so you're gonna peter season was young too it, it i mean was, both of those yeah i feel like matt season was really when they said you know a lot of they got a lot of feedback from people watching of these girls are too young how can you think that a, a 21 year old is ready to get engaged um or enter into that series of a relationship and so you know now you have a lot of those girls on this this beach <laughs> you know like hoping to end things in an engagement yeah and i it will see i think kenny obviously didn't you didn't see much of kenny i mean you saw way too well, much of kenny, <laughs> well, <all> of kenny. <laughs> on claire's and well, season yeah, yeah. um and obviously you know and he came down very naked or totally naked <laughs> and we'll see but i'm really i am i'm curious i wonder if these conversations will keep going and specifically to joe you know, we've talked so much about like how authentic are any of these people now yeah. with social media and, and this perceived playbook. And it, I don't know, you you see even with Kenny, a lack of comfort in his own skin. This is who I am. An acknowledgement, a willingness to talk about it mm -hmm. on camera when he's on his on ones. And I don't think it's you don't see that as much when you have a younger cast because they're just always in their head about saying and doing the right thing. Wanting to per be it, perceived well on. Yeah, television. it's a lot of yeah. like, you know, bachelor talk and bachelor tropes. And like, you know, Joe, who is like, I don't know, fucking, what do you want me to say? Like, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking in my head. Yeah. And it's it's remarkably refreshing. Yeah. Um, just a couple like Mari. Uh, apparently she thinks we know her to have a large ass, but now we do do know she has apparently a large i mean hey it's like but it was just kind of funny it's like people know me for like having a big butt and being hit by a dildo and I'm i didn't like, remember yeah. her and i don't mean that in a mean way it was just she got such little time on television like yeah. there was but there was a lot more interesting stuff those things no, no. <laughs> i remembered katie with the dildo i didn't i didn't see anything else no. you know yeah. <laughs> like there was nothing else. matt wasn't in that Mari wasn't I in mean, that. when Mari showed up, I remembered her for me as someone who I thought like might be a villain on Matt season. Really? Just because, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. she she looks like a hot Ursula. Like people. Okay. I mean, the show is that simple. <laughs> Honestly, if you look like it is, they, yeah. they will. And and she 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 looked a little like snarky on. You know, you never, you're like, and I swear Victoria and then, was the queen walking And then in. like, she just kind of like got si Yeah, it was just the Victoria yeah. show. And then you didn't see much of her. Very few names uh, out there. We know we can trust just by hearing the name, but Martha Stewart and it comes to cooking and baking and in the kitchen is I think something we can have a lot of confidence in. And now Martha Stewart and Marley Spoon are partnering together to make great tasting meals possible every day of the week by delivering a variety of recipe options ranging from breakfast to dinner to desserts and featuring both the classic flavors you love and new and exciting flavors you'll want to discover. That is right. Whether you're looking for kid-friendly classics like pizza and tacos, adventurous and flavorful dishes from around the world and desserts, breakfast and smoothies, Martha Stewart and Marley Spoon have got you covered. The best part about uh, it, it, this is they make it super convenient and easy. It's super easy to make. 
and it's delicious. You know what I love about this so much is that uh, being a creature of habit, uh, Natalie and I will have a habit of eating the same meals over and over. And with Martha Stewart and Marley Spoon, they have helped us mix it up. That's right. So you can too. And if you've tried, if you're tired of the rushed meals and boring dinners, let Martha Stewart and Marley Spoon change that. Go to MarleySpoon.com and use promo code VIALL to get $100, $100 off your first four orders. Wow, that's $100 of free food just for using promo code VIALL. And trust me, it's a game changer. Everything's delicious, everything's ready fast, and everybody loves the food. Check them out at marleyspoon.com and use my promo code VIALL for $100 off your first four orders. Healthcare for women is unnecessarily complicated. So I've heard. I don't. Can confirm. Can confirm, Amanda. Ali's shaking (laughs) her head. Absolutely. So there you go. I'm sure all the ladies listening will uh, uh, appreciate that as well. Life is stressful enough. Access to health care shouldn't be. Luckily, if you uh, want to get birth control, getting birth control is one less thing you'll have to worry about with the Pill Club. You'll never have to make a trip to the doctor or wait in line at the pharmacy ever again. They provide access to care from the comfort of your home and delivery to your door in discreet packaging. So whether you want to renew a birth control prescription, you want to get on birth control for the first time, uh, maybe you want to change it, you know, um, I feel like there's a lot of different options out there and everybody, everyone's body is different. Uh, streamline it. Uh, again, you can do it right from the comfort of your home. Uh, so if, uh, if you're on birth control, remember remembering to take your pill is already hard enough work. Forget going to the doctor in person to get your prescription and picking it up from the pharmacy. The Pill Club wants to make, wants to help take the work out of taking care of yourself. The Pill Club is a birth control subscription prescribed by medical professionals and delivered straight to your door for free. The Pill Club carries over 120 FDA approved brands. Most brands of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. Otherwise, prices start at as low as $7 per month without insurance. The Pill Club delivers birth control to your door for free in discreet packaging right now when you go to the pillclub.com slash v-i-a-l the pill club is offering a ten dollar donation to bedsider.org for every vial file listener who becomes a patient your donations will help low-income individuals get access to birth control through bedsider.org that's the pillclub.com slash v-i-a-l-l to get your first birth control care package and donate to help more women in need of affordable birth control remember the pillclub.com slash v-i-a-l-l you must use the link to make a donation. But isn't that true of like every single reality show of the people that are a little bit more normal don't get as much TV time? Uh, Totally. Well, you know what's interesting? When Natasha showed up, right? Yeah. I've gotten to know Natasha and Natasha in life. She's been on the podcast. I've hung out with her in in person. She is, she's wonderful just Mm -hmm. in life. She's just smart, intelligent. She's a little nut. And I mean that as a compliment. She's mm-hmm. funny and goofy yeah. and has a huge personality. We saw her personality for the first time this season. Well, that was what I was going to say. She, and yeah. on Peter's season, she was like top five or six. And it was like one of those top five or six. You're like, why the fuck is, that's not, does she not speak or, yeah. or whatever? Yeah. And it kind of just goes to show you like, again, on Paradise, you, you know, you can get an opportunity to see people's personality because after I got to know Natasha in life, I was like, how did we not see any of this on Peter's season? She's funny. She's emotionally intelligent. Yeah. She loves shadow dancing. I think she's going to be a things. star yeah. uh, <laughs> this season, Natasha, for sure. Uh, and then who, who just sent a, like whatever I don't know she didn't well, even have an Kelsey entrance well the Kelsey thing like they leaned into the Kelsey champagne thing on the I, video I mean, like, intro everyone on the remembers, intro with David yeah everyone yeah. remembers it was a that big moment. moment it was a big moment on the show yeah well she they was, leaned into it she walked in very confidently I, I was very impressed with the the growth that she's had she in acted the like she years. was the host of Paradise I felt like she walked she up to David and she yeah. was like Welcome to paradise to yeah. David. And I was like, no, that's his job. Like what? It felt like she was like gunning for his job. Yeah. I, I, I liked I, liked, I feel like I she's Kathy. waiting for it. someone. Her person hasn't arrived yet. I don't know. This is, well, there's, there's going to be a lot of that for sure. Yeah. Oh, going back to Kenny, I did think um, he kind of reminds me of every person that's ever been on real world road rules challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know like and that's yeah millennial joke any gen zers look it up but like he he oh, fits that type like that yeah. mold is like i feel like he was on that show in another life yeah the yeah. spiky hair yeah like, uh, by itself gives it away the road <laughs> you know boy band manager he's got the earrings he's in great shape good looking guy yeah and, and i've 
I've never met him. Everyone, I, I've heard people really like him. Okay. Even he went yeah. on a show. Like the yeah. producers like, he's a, it sounds, you know, he clearly comes across as like a potential douchebag. <laughs> he just does, right? Yeah. Like he yeah. must know. Shoulder tattoo. He must know that. And like whatever, you know. And so the, from the tat, and the tats are fine, but the earrings to the spike hair to the boob, this the whole thing. There's Not a, one yeah. thing. <laughs> it's the whole package. There's like a fuck boy I'm not even a fuck boy like a douchebag alert but I've heard he's an actually <laughs> a, really a, a, good, guy, a good dude yeah. and fun to be around good. and so we'll, we'll see, I think you will see, yeah I think he's he from will, Chicago right yeah he lives good in Chicago. From Chicago well they yeah. asked him what he did all day and she he was like I don't know like, <laughs> drink coffee coffee, Boy, drink like, coffee. <laughs> Like that's a nice way to say you're unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> I drink coffee. Yeah. Let's wake up. Have a okay, coffee. wait. Can we talk yeah. about the best moment out of the two hours of the episode? Was yeah. Tammy saying, "I loved being greeted by Dave Chappelle." <laughs> I spit my water out. <laughs> Oh god, that was so good. I, I hope that she's like that Dave is, Chappelle, right? That I was like, you have oh to be god. remembered for that forever, right? Yeah, but also like, what is Dave Chappelle gonna think about this? What is David Spade gonna think about this? Because oh, there's clearly, so many jokes in it. they yeah. didn't. You know, this was in an ITM, right? They, this you. That's the thing. When you watch it back, I'm pretty sure, right? You're gonna watch yeah. it and almost think that, and your brain's gonna tell you she said that to David Spade, but she didn't. She said that in an ITM yeah. about the conversation while you seeing her in front of David Spade. It's it's how the the show tricks you. Yeah. Um, but oh, he yeah. would have had a great comeback if that was actually to him. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure yeah. Spade <laughs> handled it quite graciously. Like, clearly he had fun with the fact that he was there. Why are you here? He's like, I lost a bet. Like, he, you know, whatever. Yeah. He's having fun. He's a fan of the show. Yeah. Uh, he's not trying to act above it all. Like, I he uh, I I enjoyed him, and he totally. he wasn't trying to be all like. You know, he wasn't gunning for the position. He was just like, I'm here to just fuck around and have some fun. Yeah. I hope the sh I, again, I hope the show. He's got big fuck around and find out energy yeah. right now. I, I hope the show <laughs> goes back to like its comedy roots. Like I think, you know, we didn't have it last season, but like I know that they actively were like, oh, like, you know, we're The Bachelor and we're ABC. And so like it's drama and love and like, no, it's it. People appreciated it when it first came for like the fact that you can find love and laugh and yeah. have some fun and yeah. you can talk to fucking crabs and lizards. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's a fucking TV show. Yeah. Like, um, so I hope they don't stop doing, doing that. Uh, Brendan shows up. We're reminded that he's super hot. Like everyone, he's <laughs> all a, the he, girls love him. All the girls love him. Um, we didn't see much of, of Brandon. Yeah, I feel like the only thing we did see was him being like, like, come and get it, girls. Like, sort of being like, these girls better work for their rows, which, like, again, is, like, not a huge deal. But the, the fact that that was the only thing we saw, I was like, ooh. Well, it's well fun no, that he you, was well, on the beach with Natasha, wasn't he? You, yeah. It's fun. That, it's At fun, night. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good that you point that out because it was clearly a joke, right? Mm -hmm, right. But because... It is the only real thing we did see of him. So remember that as we fast forward to the regular seasons, as there's going to be a guy, and my prediction is Brendan, uh, and you kind of for the foreshadowing. Every that's how they get their villain. Yeah, heart yeah, like he's making heart jokes. Throb, yeah. sweet guy. You know, America's sweetheart, the guy who's like the, you know Justin Breaking Long's favorite. Like he's the greatest guy in the world. Uh, Blake from Becca season, every, you know, oh, he's the he's the sweetest and blah blah blah. And he comes down and it's 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 just he's just he's had a lot of sex this past year. He's enjoying <laughs> the freedoms of and and the problem is, I said this to Blake at Ben Higgins bachelor party. We're all hanging out and yeah. you know, Blake was front. You know, we were just talking obviously about the show and I was like, listen, you know, you you probably I don't know if you still get it yet, but the re. This was your problem. And yeah. all this other bullshit that you think it is, your problem is, and he is like, I don't, I don't care what you do, man. Like, he's like, hey, you know, no judgment on how, you, what you do in your private life or like, I, you know, you're not, that's fine. But you were portrayed as Ben Higgins and you had no problem with people thinking you were Ben Higgins. And then you went around in your life, you're not. Mm -hmm. And then you showed back up on Paradise and tried to keep that image going going of yeah. I'm Ben Higgins yeah, and you're just not fucking Ben Higgins. It's not and authentic. So, it's not authentic. Yeah. And so Brendan is potentially going to fall trap of believing he's, you know, going to go for the bachelor acting yeah. like 
it's amazing because like you go on that show and you're trained that you know can i interrupt you can i interrupt yeah. you and like you you watched the lead whoever you were dating be okay with dating multiple people and you're like oh you can date multiple this is the show it's the bachelor you can date multiple people so in paradise you're like oh yeah i can date multiple people and it all like yeah. you know you cannot Bites date multiple ass. people it, you <laughs> so it was very interesting in both brendan and serena p's video like intro videos they both almost were proud of the fact that they left the bachelor bachelorette on their own accord yes like that's a weird thing to be proud of but like both of them had this like moment where it was almost uh because holier than the rest of the people because on the beach the, yeah situation. because the past year their friends and family and people i love that you they a lot of even fans and family members have been told telling them in some way shape or form some version of you're above the show you left them before they left you're, you. yeah, yeah you did something different you know like you know, if, again, Which if, they are the two most desired heading into paradise. Come across as polished. I mean, if you ask Justin Long, he probably would say Brennan's <laughs> too good for this show, right? And so, and he's just a guy. Which is also, I think you guys are skipping over Ivan. We are skipping what about, over Ivan. Well, we just yeah. haven't got because, to Ivan. because in this scenario, though, because Ivan was very cocky in his <gasps> video, really, as well, and was like. I'm the one who's here. I feel like I'm going to be a catch. Like there's no competition on this beach. And then that's when like Brendan came in. Yeah, but he, I yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Could, he has possibility for being a villain as oh, well. He does, watch. but I don't, I, I think no, Ivan's incredibly no. smart <laughs> and I really don't think he will. And it comes down to, I think Brendan will get all, all the attention. Ivan's like the, the younger, bro like your friend's younger brother who's like, yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to get her. But like, you, you're like, oh, that's cute. I swear there's a preview yeah. where he's getting, it's just like, I swear totally there's right. a preview where he's getting bitched out. I could have sworn oh, it was him. I I'm sure Ivan will be in drama. I just, you, and you're not, because you're not going to get that many of those guys. You're going to get one. There was one Blake. There was, you know, it was one, you know, uh, Josh Murray. I mean, Josh yeah. Murray did that. Like you one know? primary shit stirrer. Yeah. Or, or just like someone walks in thinking I'm above this. I'm the hero for my season. You know, like Carl. They, well, Carl Thomas. Uh, no, I think Tom, I, I, I bet Thomas will have yeah. some sort of redemption arc. You saw a preview of him dating the former Bachelorette. I mean, we'll see how that ends. If yeah. he ends up fucking over Becca, they could go okay. real south for him. But So it's, it's also very interesting to me of who is not in paradise or like, I don't know if they're coming later in the season, but I, I don't think they are of like the Tyler Camerons, the Hannah Slusses, the Hannah Ann, um, you know, Maddie Prue. Like, I feel like all of those people of like, well, a couple like uh, a couple of those people you named uh, turned it down. Okay, uh, Maddie no, I, Pruitt, I don't think was ever offered it. She's just yeah. not. I, I think Maddie Pruitt would probably agree, and the she's not meant for paradise. Yeah, it works to go on the Bachelor but and say I are, don't kiss yeah. guys, I don't date guys, I don't like that works on the Bachelor. It does not work in paradise, yeah. and they have four seasons to cast from. They like they totally. Don't, it's just it's interesting to me because it's on this two year delay now yeah. since we've had it last. Of there are so many people from. Um, you know Hannah Brown season from you know Peter season that we we haven't seen in this capacity yet. Yeah, and like like Tyler, my and guess would is, be hot shit in oh, paradise. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they would have loved to have Tyler. Yeah, I think he just turned <laughs> everyone it down. would love to have Tyler. <laughs> um, and and we'll talk about that when we uh, talk about potential bachelors for next season and, and rumors out there. Um, yeah, but Ivan obviously comes. You know, he, I think it'll be interesting. And then we get uh, Connor. Connor, I'm curious what the story is going to be for Connor. I, Kissing redemption. That's the entire story. I don't know <laughs> right? if he's going to get entire it. Well, I, he already got it this episode. Yeah. Sure. But if that's the story, <laughs> then he, I <laughs> objective. Let's talk about <laughs> Trey for except like we'll fast forward. Because what a wild storyline. Not even that. But let's let's <laughs> we'll backtrack. But like, I want to give props to Trey. Uh, his make out and I, like objectively Trey looks like a good kisser Tajwan says he's a good kisser and the way better he, than his uncle yeah better than his uncle the way he he was kissing it was like he he you could tell he was present he was slow Connor B when he made out with Casey reminded me when I like growing up in a large family when my mom would buy sugar cereal and we'd race downstairs and try to like 
eat it before it was all gone. Like that's how Connor B kissed Katie. It was like this, like yeah. Katie was like going to run away. And I mean, they didn't have chemistry, but I didn't even think on the, the mental all his kiss looked very good. Hot take your bank account should work for you. Not against you. Chime is an award-winning app and debit card with no hidden fees or monthly minimums. After all, you earn your money. You deserve to keep it. Free overdraft frees up to $200 in debit purchases with SpotMe. It's like overdraft protection, but better. Get your paychecks, benefits, stimulus checks, and tax returns up to two days earlier with direct deposit. No hidden fees or monthly minimums. Plus, you have over 60,000 fee-free ATMs at locations like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, CVS, and more. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Turn on alerts to let you know when your card is used and instantly block your card if something seems fishy. Join the millions on Chime. Sign up takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Apply now at Chime.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is Chime.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Chime is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by the Bank Corp or Stride Bank N.A. Member FDIC. Eligible requirements and overdraft fee limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases. Limits, limits start at $20 and may increase up to $200 by Chime. Early direct deposit depends on the payer. Out of network cash withdrawals fees apply. Third party cash and deposit fees may apply. Go to chime.com slash V I A L L for more details. Each and every, that's right, natural deodorant that uh, makes you smell great all day long while well, doesn't put the harmful ingredients that go into so many non natural deodorants like aluminum, parabens, and other toxins. Uh, listen, I, I use each and every every day. I, I love it. It's amazing. They have great scents. Quite honestly, I like them all. The uh, lavender and, and lemon's great. The vanilla. Uh, there's a cedar one. It's also wonderful. The, the important thing is you smell great all day long. Uh, and I say that as someone who works out a lot and sweats a lot. And if I don't wear deodorant, I, uh, I stink. And I don't with uh, with this <laughs> stuff. And uh, it's made with uh, six simple ingredients uh, like Dead Sea salt, coconut oil, and other natural essential oils. We want you to see for yourself how awesome each and every is. And we have an amazing deal for you to get started. 30% off your first purchase. That's 30% off. Just go to our special URL, eachandevery.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use promo code V-I-A-L-L 30. Seriously, 30% off. You can't beat it. Use promo code V-I-A-L-L at eachandevery.com slash V-I-A-L-L. I can't uh, endorse it more than I... I mean, like it's truly awesome. Use it every day. Uh, I truly love it. And I'll use it for... Ever, hopefully, as long as you guys stick around each and every, I'll be your customer. Connor? No, I don't think the, yeah. the girl that came from the audience and like made out with him. No, I, like that's that, my point. Yeah. Is I don't think I think Connor is an hyper aggressive kisser. That for some women they might be into it, but like I think Trey w watching it was like a guy who's like, let's just what's the dance? Like yeah. it was present. He I was like, like, yeah, I feel like Connor enters his kisses with an agenda. Like he yes. knows exactly what he's going to do. And I feel like you have to respond in the moment to like whatever your partner's putting down. Connor. Yes. Connor is just like, this is how I kiss. I'm leading. It's like, it's a guy at a wedding. Who's just like, he only has one speed on the dance floor. Like it doesn't <laughs> matter if it's the a, electric slide. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> this is how I'm dancing. I don't care if it's a fast or slow song. Yeah. Keep up man. And, and Trey, I feel like is a guy who's just like, Hey, what's uh, what's the song we're playing? and whatever and it just like oh my uncle sang this song before yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um at Tajwan I, I really hope she's around for a while she she is so funny she's great she is so entertaining she's and beautiful like, and funny and self where she's relatable, fuck and relatable. Yeah. she had a cup of coffee two seasons ago and got sent home she must be on for a while I hope so because why bring her back for like one episode. I mean, again. her and Trey are so unexpected to me, but I kind of love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want to see. The wedding will be awkward. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I want to see. I'm glad we got to see this make out. Like, you know, Trey was the guy who like Katie wasn't into. But so it was like her friend, friend, friend energy and like all the guys liked him. But I want to see sides of. Uh, uh, of Trey yeah. and then the uncle stuff is just I mean Cash French Mom's kiss also been, um, a a a uh, French. chef's <laughs> chef's kiss <What>? sorry <laughs> you know we're talking about making out you know we didn't get to see much of Trey's response though to the uncle did we I don't remember like, he was fine with it that was the thing he, he's like oh man like this sucks and then he's like I'm still gonna pursue her it's like you know he has a hot uncle then you know like he must not know that he like also we don't even know the age of his what, uncle well I mean we assume like it must be really old if but like Trey's 26 the uncle could be 40 
I mean, um, I have a I have a 17 year old sister. You know what I'm saying? Like I have a large. It's unique. You know, not everyone has a large family with. Yeah. But like you, he, you know, Trey's brother could be his half brother from uh, another. You know, who knows? Or his his full brother. And like you know, Trey was the one that like the accident, the unexpected kid. And there's like a 15 year age difference, or maybe there's like a five year age difference yeah. from his uncle. Like we have, or and that's what I'm, I mean, like. Between Trey's dad, dad or mom yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. I think the so, uncle yeah. just needs to well, come on the show. I know people. <laughs> it. I know people whose their aunts and uncles are younger than them. Well, that's what I'm saying. My like, my yeah. sister Bella is two years, two or three years older than my niece. Yeah, it's right? like modern family. Um, yeah. It's so sure. like, we we hear uncle and we're thinking like. Old it's still guy. weird. Like they're still blood relatives, and they oh, are <laughs> yeah. making out with the same girl. But I was gonna say, if if they are living in the same city, then at least there is a, a chance for success coming out yeah. of par- they paradise. They might not even be blood related. We don't. There's more. We definitely need some. <laughs> I'm pretty details. sure they're blood related. This is, he said. He said. He's like, that's my blood relative. Oh, he did. Say yeah. That? Okay. <laughs> he literally said it in that quote. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Like for- if it, if I was going to make out with someone else, it, like the nephew of whoever i would be like giving all this context if they weren't actually blood related you know like i would i would feel a lot better about that and like put that out to people so that they knew that it wasn't as yeah. weird as it is Listen, i loved what we have because obviously episode one is a lot of intros and a lot of getting to know you's and it's blah 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 it's like okay and so that was like the one kind of like fun storyline of, of the oh, episode great um i hope they get married kenny like i was surprised like kenny was in fact naked right like there's no reason to think that he wasn't or he had a su- i i mm. only say that because yeah we're all adults here but like there's a just a dick flopping around the beach it's like and, an and the women, yeah. dick the women in real life everyone was kind of like very normal okay, about it yeah on him. <laughs> there was no like looking away it's like oh my god it's just like a <laughs> Well, and then God, when, your dick is just there the whole, you know, it's just like, I, I feel like, you know, like I'm a mature guy, but after a while I'd be like, you know, the, he's bending over. I don't, he's just like, he's like on a cushion on with what? Mari. He's on a cushion with Mari. They're like laying there with their margaritas. I'm like, okay, so it's our I two think drinks it, and a dick. I like, think at that yeah. point he definitely had something on and they're black boxing it. But when he came down to the beach for the first, even five or 10 minutes, if he's totally naked, everyone was just very kind of like okay yeah all right he's naked and no to no their credit was, like, was just like fuck that's just a dick right there yeah. man <laughs> he did i i appreciate it for a second he said to mari because you can tell he really likes her he goes he's like please don't judge me for this yeah. before their their conversation yeah. so i he knows I, it's a, a shtick yeah and i i like that conversation that they had when they talked about you know you had two conversations about age, age gaps yeah between joe and, and serena p and and um kenny and and mari and yeah it was just more of a you could tell both guys were self-conscious and very curious about what the women they were talking to yeah. thought. To have that conversation, I feel like it's such a normal conversation outside of. Yeah, I mean, in batch, like it happens a lot. And what's what's I thought was interesting too is like you had I think did both women were like yeah I've dated all the guys or did Serena P not say that I don't they, know I think they both did I think Natasha just has a wonderful interesting life in general yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think Natasha's dated all sorts of interesting people. Yeah, a rich sexual history. <laughs> I don't even know if it's rich, but like, yeah, Natasha could like be on a real life Sex in the City kind of show. Okay. Um, but yeah, just kind of talking about like, yeah, I've dated older guys than you. Or yeah. Whatever. Well, even just like they asked because they don't. You realize that they don't know everyone's age necessarily. Like they have a general sense, but like for them to even like bring it up is like, let's just get this out on the table as like yeah. an informed consent thing. Like let's name this that way. It's not like nobody feels like tricked or whatever. And it'll be interesting. Again, we're recording this before the episode airs. Like, what are the, do, does Twitter make a big deal about it? Do they not care? Do they talk about it at all in terms of? You know the fifteen-year age gap, uh, Joe and Serena P. I mean, we are, we got a preview of Joe saying, uh, "You're the second person I love," like to Serena P. So, like, okay, spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, maybe that doesn't happen. It's the, it is the uh, season, but I, you know, there's a it doesn't that didn't look edited. I mean, he was clearly talking to yeah. Serena P. 
Um, it's just who's ready for what, who's like in the the right time in their life, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was on the uh, on the show, I was just self conscious of like I was just like I'm like I'm not like I didn't I'm friends with the twins now, but at the time I didn't know who the twins were, but they're objectively pretty women, and yeah. I, and that I remember the producers being like, "Who would you want to go on a date with?" And I'm like, "Not the twins." Like it was yeah. just more like I'm not like I don't know them, but I was just self conscious about like being older than them or just the perception of it rather than I mean you you're know, also the in a completely different stage of life of you know having different life experiences the ten, even a 10 year age gap i feel like can be a lot sometimes I, I liked that serena p what she said was i think her exact words not exact but i'm probably i'm paraphrasing uh potentially different stages of life i yeah. like that she said potentially because that is a fact that is a reality that it's potentially you have to acknowledge that but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is like you know like uh, you know like uh, I think Con uh, Kenny's talking about uh, he's more mature or whatever, and then he comes down naked. Again, I'm not, he's just, it's a TV show, he's having fun, but like, and we know, like, we heard Kenny, but maybe Kenny is just, maybe he is immature. Maybe yeah. he is like popping bottles on the like weekend in playful, Chicago yeah. and playful, and, and, and who knows? Maybe he's still a fuckboy. We don't know. And Serena P could be like, you know, has already been framed as someone who has like a very clear sense of what she wants and mm -hmm. someone who possesses yeah. like a good internal dialogue. But that also could be immature immaturity. That could be the perception. You know, you can have a lot of people how they were raised. This is what I want. Yeah. They have no real life experiences and then they hit life and then they're radically. She's never been heartbroken yeah. before. She's never experienced a, a failed like two year relationship where you're talking about children and marriage yeah. and, and moving to a different state. So yeah, so Serena P looks mature, but she could be, Im we don't know. I'm just saying that that's that, I think that's what's fascinating about this conversation. I thought at 23 I yeah. was ready to get married and I was not. Yeah. So at all, it's all very, very different in terms of what people's life has actually been yeah. at the age that they are, what experiences have they had heartbroken, what's their, how independent or not have they been? So it's a fascinating conversation. I'll, I'm curious to that point. Is it something they're going to just bring up an episode one to get it out of the way as you suggested, or will it be something they continue to talk about as these relationships progress? You know, like, you know, with Natalie and, and me being older, like that was a huge topic of a conversation between the both of us as we were even considering dating of like, where like how realistic how honest are, are we to ourselves where what stages of life are we in except so like, we wouldn't we didn't just for like we didn't just acknowledge it and then move on yeah. we can constantly had conversations yeah about that it'll be interesting to see whether or not we do. see those conversations even uh, yeah I'm, I'm really i'm really interested if that's the case um so we uh, anything to chat about before we get into like the actual first date between abigail i mean and, it, it definitely um, seemed like there were some other couples that like had been talking before the show of oh you think so you yeah, picked up on that already aaron and who was he with was it was he with tammy oh aaron tammy. yeah tammy. yeah aaron and tammy have definitely been in the dms okay or texting <laughs> something like there there are a couple of people of like even calling them out of like oh you're you're looking for someone you know someone's gonna walk down those steps yeah so i mean that they've all well I can. I wish they acknowledge it on the show. I'm sure they will at one point. Yeah. But they will vilify it 100%. I mean, same in the way that they did with Blake uh, yeah. last season. But they all, like, the truth is, they all have been talking. Yeah. All of them. And, and maybe it's all just friendly and, the, you know, like, maybe it's not all. And, and, and the women are I mean, as savage as the men. They like, couldn't have hookup culture this last year because you were quarantined. Yeah. You had to stay in your own state. So. So yeah, they're it's not all, like they were all they're going all, to Coachella because Coachella was canceled. Yeah, or stagecoach. Yeah, stagecoach. Um, it is always interesting <laughs> because the women are as savage in the DMs as the men, but it's never really acknowledged on this show. Like the women have, I've heard plenty of stories about they're all they're talking to multiple guys and they're and 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 the guys think they're all, they're the only girl oh. they're talking to and then it all kind of plays out on the beach and they and it's all gossip and by the time they get on the beach all the producers know you know and it's it's just kind of a funny uh, thing uh I, i'm i really hope we don't get more my real hope for this season no more connor b songs i just yeah, yeah. we get it you're very talented you can sing I don't need to hear it anymore. I don't. 
Nah. Yeah, he's literally that dude who's whipping out his guitar at the party. Yeah. It's like he's a camp counselor that grew up. Totally. Yeah. It's just stick. I'm I'm over it. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want any more of Carl's jokes. They're not jokes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, we almost we almost uh, brushed over that. No, they are jokes. They're just not funny. It's so bad that like you know we always talk about on this show. Just be very careful not to uh, judge a book by its cover from this TV show. It is a show. It's edited. We don't know these people's personality, but like. We've got so little of Carl, but every time we see Carl, it's it's enough of we can't just all be edited to make him seem complete unself aware and douchey. Like that line where he just like, yeah, I got a name, and then it, and it would <laughs> it would <laughs> so bad. It, 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 it would been it would been one thing if he just simply was like, I'm just kidding, and just that would have been maybe okay. Still kind of like you're not funny, but way to try. But then he's like. Then he admitted, I wanted to see how you would respond. Truly fuck you, Carl. Yeah. Like that kind of energy of constantly, He's, uh, what, I mean, what do you would call it? Insecurity. Insecurity. Testing. 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 Yeah. Testing. Testing. Negging. Condescending. Like it's like the power he thinks he should have. Oh, my, over... my sneakers are waterproof. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, he is a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Carl's the greatest guy. I will still say I don't know him. I haven't met him. It is a TV show, but he seems like, you know, the, yeah, I mean, the, the motivational speaker, he, I, I would, I, I would be willing to bet he's a compulsive liar, and it's just a bunch of little lies that don't make any sense or why he needs to lie about it. But he's just constantly, he's the kid growing up that would tell you that he had like a Mickey Mantle rookie card, and he would be like, "Oh, can I see your Mickey Mantle rookie card?" We all had this friend growing up, or he's like his dad had like this mansion on a lake, and you'd be like, "Oh, can we go to your you know, the second home?" And you never saw any of these yeah. things, but he would constantly just make shit up because yeah. that's how he thought he would get friends, and that's I'm pretty sure Carl. That makes me sad, though. I know. It's like it's so bad that you. I almost feel bad for Carl because it's such a projection of his own insecurities. And, yeah. and But like you keep going on the show and acting like an asshole and, and that the whole I just wanted to test you like that's your opener. Ugh. As someone who had to Gross. like watch his whole teaser trailer of his motivational speaking business, I don't feel bad for him. I feel bad for myself. Oh. No. But I, I, yeah, but that's one of those things is who is he? Because the guys are giving out the roses this week. So who is he going to give his rose to? Who is he going to couple up with? That's why Carl David. can come on <laughs> week yeah. one because you're going to yep. get two because like the biggest that's not the qu the big question is what woman is going to give him a rose when the women have there no one is yeah he'll, yeah. he'll yeah. be on for two weeks he'll be but, on for two weeks because yeah. some girl is going to have good gameplay and like get him get the rose like have a conversation that's with him Kelsey get the rose around. and then not give him the rose when yeah. it's their turn yeah. yeah ah that's right good one kathy yeah. that's how kelsey stays yeah yeah um so yeah carl just stop you know just shh Stop being Carl. <laughs> it's just, you don't have to lie, man. Move in silence. Um, Abigail finally get what? Wait, just Victoria on the topic of Carl. Because there was a moment of them talking. And it was like. Interestingly enough, I know we gave Victoria a lot of shit. The, the women all like Victoria. You can yeah. tell. They, you could tell that on Matt season. I mean, listen, she she's probably not everyone's cup of tea. And she's probably loud and can be obnoxious. But I... I, I like Victoria in the sense that like maybe her jokes aren't landing, but you can tell she's just like ridiculous and she knows she's being ridiculous. Carl is being, you could, Carl is trying to act cool. Well, Victoria is just trying to be outrageous and she like yeah. clearly knows like this is stupid. She's more of a human this season. I feel like we see that she's making fun of herself and playing yeah, into she's that. She's in on the joke. Whereas, whereas Carl maybe he is in on the joke but i don't know well i think to, i actually my guess is victoria's being the same it reads better in paradise yeah what do you think of the goddess rebrand whatever it's a stick it's fine you're just you're just one although up connor's comment was amazing what do you say <laughs> he said he said well, did you put a bunch of zip, zip ties, ties on yeah. that thing <laughs> Yeah, it was great and you I, know what she didn't okay. get she kind of owned it she didn't get flustered yeah but it, it was also one of those things of she came out and i do think she received an unnecessarily large amount of hate coming off of yes. matt's season yeah. of like yeah she she could have handled herself better but she received so much online hate and like i think you know yeah maybe it, we're seeing a new version of her because of 
I, that, I just think it's fascinating. It's the show's different. And so therefore we react different to literally the same mm -hmm. stuff. And yeah. it's just kind of a fan. And I just, I just want if people listening just, just think about that when you're watching before you just fucking go off on people or you know exactly what you're seeing. You're watching things through a different lens and you're seeing it different. And it, again, it's just a fucking show. Um, <laughs> Noah, uh, no, Ab Abigail gets a date card. She asked Noah then, yeah. She did know. ask Noah. He heavily pursued her. I feel like from the second he like walked down those steps, he was, yeah. Abigail was kind of like, oh, I'll see who comes. Like she, she was putting her feelers out to everyone. And then, um, uh, what she was the first person out there and she yeah, first she was bit, yeah. looking at yeah. joe she was looking at you know brendan and then noah was like straight to her beeline yeah i uh i mean you see him on the date and right off the bat abigail kind of explained to america why she got the first impression rose and then fell off the face of the earth like why yeah. she wasn't the bachelorette mm -hmm. and the, you know i i wanted her to be the bachelorette yeah you know but she was just like i i'm a I'm closed off. I don't open up. And my guess is that's how she acted on The she's, Bachelor, where she's just like, I don't, I can't. She's an introvert. Yeah. And so she appreciates one on one or small group settings as opposed to, you know, the party setting, which is going to be very interesting how that plays out in paradise because it's constant, you're constantly surrounded by other people. Um, and if she's got the first date card on the first night, I can't imagine her getting another date any time during the season, like one-on-one -on -one date, unless she's asked. Yeah, or or we'll see how this relationship goes, if it goes anywhere. I mean, this could literally be the start of like a relationship you see till the end, yeah. right? And quite honestly, you know, the, you know Tanner and Jade from uh, season two, like they got together early on and you didn't see much of them because they just were like off in their own. They weren't part of the drama. Yeah. You know, we'll see. I, I've always been. I've always on the show. I, I liked Noah because it's a. He's a young man who seems confident in himself. He seems to know himself. Whether you like it or not, he's just gonna be him. I like at least from those two. Like that personality, I think, is something that might work well with Abigail's personality. Who he doesn't mind challenge like getting her to open up yeah. and and i think it could be a, a match i i think the world of abigail i think she's like a, a gem that needs to be protected at all costs and there's just something about noah that like even when she was saying her boundaries of like hey i usually am one to take things slow and he's like well you can't do that you can't like there's something about mm -hmm. like i feel like he's pressuring her to open up as opposed to guiding her into opening up like and it's and creating enough line. trust yeah. into opening up. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. I don't, I don't. Know. I mean, it's a fine line, especially as we're watching it through the lens of a TV show. Of, of there are just some. I wouldn't say red flags. I think they're just some. I haven't seen the green flags yet from him. Gotcha. It seemed to have a nice turn, though. He what? I just disagree. <laughs> really? Yeah. I I, I thought I, he was. I thought he was lovely and charming and i thought that he was like trying to recognize the situation that he was in is like i'm in this kind of accelerated situation where i'm here with yeah. you and i want to be able to get to know you kind of like as much as i can okay. was kind of like the way i took yeah. it that's, that's how also, i saw it but it, there's this line that i feel like everyone says on dates of like oh i want to take things slow and taking things slow means something different for every, every yes. single human being and i think that we need to like get that line out of like dating scenarios or be more clear of like is that physically i take things slow emotionally i take things slow putting a label on things i want to take things slow i just want to date other people so i want to take things slow I, I and if totally people agree, just yeah. like clarified that i think there would be a lot less problems yeah. in the world i i agree in general as you know especially we talk about that on the ask nick episodes all the time and i do I agree with you that when I was watching that date at first, I couldn't tell if this date was going well or not. It yeah. seemed like it may be like from an editing, like, there was an awkwardness. It almost seemed like, okay, well clearly, you know, here's Noah, this kind of out, out, very outgoing. Yeah. And, and then Abigail very kind of like, I don't move that fast. She needed some time to acclimate to being around cameras again. Like yeah. it's not a normal, but then you got the turn and it seemed like, I forgot what Noah said to her, but he was just very complimentary and, and 
it seemed like he gave her some confidence to want to open up is yeah. how I how I took it. And it seemed yeah. like they had a nice date at the end and we'll yeah. see where, where where it goes. I I could see those two um like being together the whole whole season. You know, we had Noah on on the podcast. He comes from a large family, very traditional family values. He's still pretty young. Abigail more reserved. I don't see and I think remember when Noah was on the podcast, he talked about being a one yeah. woman guy and and yep. not Okay. And I can see Noah just being like I don't want I like whether he is right or wrong in his I'm going for Abigail because it could just be like a young this is my person this is what I'm going to do and he's just decided before he's even gotten to know Abigail I could see him being kind of resolute and I'm not going to get in the games I'm not here to like feel things out I'm not here to like test the waters I'm here for Abigail and as okay. long as she likes me uh, I could see that those yeah. two just doing their thing but I could see Abigail breaking up with Noah I don't see Noah breaking up with Abigail wow 100% yeah yeah, I feel like it's always very telling like when they're in these big group settings, like how much banter they have. And I do think like before they went on the date, Noah and Abigail absolutely looked like they were vibing together. So it's like it will be interesting to kind of continue to watch them. Like what does it look like in these like how what's their body language like when they're on camera? And they could have been definitely in each other's DMs for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't we don't really know what else. uh uh, what else from this episode before we talk about uh, potential bachelors for, for next season? Um, I really appreciated the line where Kelsey said she's not looking for anyone to fill her holes. Yeah, that was good. Yep. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for um, Wells to play therapist even more so this season. I feel like he's really taking over the the part of Chris Harrison that we were missing of like, explaining yeah, paradise part. explaining the rules and and david spade's like yep that's them <laughs> yeah we'll this see guys got it um yeah he had a little session with with joe um and joe was like i'm gonna leave and then he talked to cut to two seconds later <laughs> yeah two seconds later and wells what did and wells is like don't leave and he's like leave your heart open He's like, sure. I know you're upset, but open up your heart. Kind of yeah. a bachelor he, trope. Also, he also mentioned something of like, he's like, I understand the PTSD of it all. Coming back here yeah. where you fell in love. Well, that and, part is very yeah. accurate. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there's there's real like, <laughs> that world's fucked up. I mean, it's just <laughs> it fucks with you. And there is a lot of PTSD. And so that I think that part is very genuine. Um, and yeah, we are kind of already talked about the Joe and Serena P I, conversation. I but, do really appreciate actually going back to Joe of... Um, you can tell when someone has a lot of like mental clarity because they don't, or emotional maturity too, of not talking poorly about their ex. And he really didn't say anything other than like, hey, we grew apart. It was mutual. Um, I yeah. have a lot of respect for her. Um, I'm just, you know, nervous to let those guards down again. Yeah. And from everything I heard, and, and it was like Joe wanted to move back to Chicago, Kendall wanted to stay in LA. Yeah. And they were both like, that was and a, that's she's from here too yeah. it's not like she she moved to, yeah, we talk to a lot LA about, to be an yeah. influencer or something. and we talk a lot about non-negotiables and pet peeves that's a non-negotiable mm -hmm. my family is rooted in Chicago mine's in LA and like that is a big deal to me where's and Serena from do we know Toronto which oh, is actually okay. uh, more similar in culture in some to ways to Chicago, Chicago yeah. and the I mean when I was in Toronto it feels kind of like Chicago. Good people, yeah. Good people, Midwest, you got the winters. I mean, I don't, you know, they're actually not that far from each other. So who knows? But like, yeah, I think Kendall's very LA and, and Joe's very Chicago and Joe moved out here for a while. What and was the line about Toronto being ugly or something? <laughs> Toronto's ugly. You're pretty. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out your insides though. Cause it was like Toronto's ugly on the outside. Oh, not like you. Awkward douchey line. Oh, I actually, I tried to ask Joe. He hasn't gotten back to me yet. Cause I just messaged him. I couldn't tell when he first talked to Serena P when he said, to be honest, it reminded me a lot of my conversation with Ken Kendall. And I don't know, was that a compliment? Was that a criticism? I think it was because I think he was like, I think he said it was like he was feeling the like, oh shit, yeah. I could fall in love. When type you know, feelings. you know. But isn't that or why like the, he I wanted think he said to butterflies be butterflies or something? There? No, but that, that's what I'm saying. That's, why I, that's how I first took it, right? But then again, maybe it's just editing. Maybe it's all for the stakes of the show. 
But then you had Joe saying, I don't think I'm going to find it here. He was tell- talking to Wells being like, I don't know. Like, well, I just, I'm here and I don't think I'm going to find it. It's not for me. And it was more like maybe I, then I was like, well, maybe he's saying I've dated Kendall already. Yeah. Right. It's great. Not my person. And it seems like they might, might seem very similar. Oh. And, and, and I don't know if that's the person for me. I took it as like, Hey, you're going to like, you and your ex's favorite restaurant again for a date of like yeah, for the first totally. time after you guys broke up. So like yeah. you have so many memories with that one person and this is creating new memories with a new person, but you're going in and you're like, wow, this feel like, like deja vu. I, I can't not bed. think of my ex. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember yeah. that, you know, that alleyway where we like kissed or like that, you know, beach where we you know took a, a selfie like it's you just have so many memories with that person so it's hard to not have that at the forefront of your head and it was he was saying all of those things before they actually had the the one-on-one on the day bed of um having that conversation where i think he was just like this is the person that i'm here for i don't want to get to know anyone else yeah that makes sense yeah like i got too real too fast for joe yeah, I think that's what it was. And the, he realized like what it could be again. And then he was like, I don't know if I want to do this again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like fall in love with someone who lives in another country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. why'd you guys break up? Because like, you know. Distance. Distance. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and Serena P on Matt season was someone who's like, whether she actually knows want what she wants, thinks she knows what she wants. And again, I don't mean to be condescending to your Serena P, but like we've all met someone like you, as you said, Kathy, at 23, you think you know what you want yeah. and then you realize you want something different. But yeah. either way, Serena P left Matt because it was like, this is not what I want. And she seems like someone who's probably really close with her family. And maybe she's like, has no, ver- like I'm never going to leave Toronto for all we know. True. And, and, and Joe's like, mm, well. I mean, she's rocking the Canadian flag, so. It's true. Yeah, um, so that could be uh, an issue. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, oh, then we want like Demi, uh, great entrance. Demi's gonna Demi. I ship Demi and Dave. I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, Demi is obviously a frat. I think she's gonna come in and be. She Demi. said she was gonna steal everyone's man. Yeah, I wonder Listen. who she's gonna go for first, or is it just everyone? Uh yeah. It looked like uh, Brendan, right? Did it look like Brendan in that previous? She was going hard to tell uh no wait did i i th- wasn't there something about her and kenny and mari didn't mari say something about oh, demi? There was with the too, birthday yeah. cake yeah they Again, showed her kissing i think demi really hard to, kissing i thought brendan and kenny yeah really hard mm-hmm. to make any sense of the yeah. promo demi's a, a wwe star now yeah she doesn't need I mean, a bachelor in paradise she's anymore. great i mean she you know it'll be interesting how people respond i think if you're a fan of demi you're gonna love her even more and if you are a critic of demi you'll you know well, you're just a critic of Demi. Nothing's going to change your mind. <laughs> you love uh, Demi. <laughs> like she's like one of my best friends. Yeah. So like I, I think she's great and she's going to come down and and just. I think she's excellent TV and she's exactly what Paradise needs. For sure. 100%. Uh, I want to take some time to talk about uh, your thoughts on a potential Bachelor. Oh, bachelor, yeah. The Bachelor for the upcoming season. Uh, there's, you know. We just finished Katie's season. There's a lot of rumors going around who could be the potential bachelor. And then I'm literally just thinking out loud. We have Michelle's season going on. Is that even a possibility? No, actually, it's probably not because it would be airing when they start filming. So any of Michelle's guys are actually kind of out out of the running, out of the running. Well said. He thought someone from Bachelor in Paradise. I I think that is probably grocery store Joe, but who knows? Maybe wow. he's literally dating Serena P. Yeah. That's just a guess on my part. But I could see that kind of like I can't earnestness see Joe with love. Agreeing to that though, if he's got this much pressure going, like he doesn't want to. Yeah, he would agree to it. Be in that. Okay. I I, I, <laughs> I would be my guess. You I know. don't know for sure. Yeah. I don't know for sure. Yeah. But I, I hope it's not like a Thomas redemption. Becca breaks his heart kind of thing. I wonder. Who knows? Thomas is not going to be the bachelor. I no, I, I, I really think if, if it's if I think Wells was talking about Joe would be my guess. I also know Joe like I mean, Wells really likes Joe. I could see it. I think they're friends. I, I could see that. Uh, I want to be friends with Joe. It kind of reminded me of honestly how I became the bachelor where I had that PST and I, I was just like really struggling the whole time. And that's yeah. kind of how they framed it. And the walks on the beach, you saw Joe like 
you saw, you know, so that's how I could see Joe potentially being I in the see running. Maybe Brendan, if you if they don't go the villain route, like you were saying. Yeah, I could see that, but Brendan, I think, the girls would love Brendan. I don't know. So let's debate. Like, let's discuss. Yeah, Joe. There's been rumors of Tyler Cameron, uh, Andrew S, Michael, and let's throw in Greg. Uh, okay. Just to see, I mean, because you know, you've even seen some conversations about that, and then you know, are with we taking Ka- Ivan out? Yeah, we're taking Ivan out. Okay. I mean, we can. Uh, I sure. I mean, <laughs> Ivan's just so young. Like, I just think realistically, yeah. I don't think Ivan's part of the conversation. Out of those, if you have five options of people already that are what five six people that you just yeah. mentioned, I I think Ivan's great. I just don't know that. I would love to see Ivan. Yeah. Showed him his like his footage though. They showed him with a kid, and I feel like that's very like heartthrob energy. I personally think Ivan would make a great bachelor. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's. My guess is he's not being. Considered. I mean, even even Andrew has a lot like bigger of a personality, able to carry uh, a show like Andrew that. Asks, but they're they're the same age. That's that's my concern with both of them. Of like they're they're young, and so if you're 26, then you're going to be casting an another round of girls that are 20 to 27 and America's going to be upset again. Yeah, I uh well, it's interesting because I've said this not too long ago, I think being the bachelor is not uh, as attractive as a role as it used to be. Mm. Uh That's why I can't see Tyler Cameron doing it. I, I I would I would love to see him do it. Don't get me wrong, I think America would love to see him do it and and tune in every single week, but I just can't see him with the success that he's had outside of Bachelor Nation. I can, he doesn't need to do it. I yeah. completely agree. I think Tyler Cameron has zero chance to come out looking better, looking better than yeah. going in zero mm-hmm. and that's has nothing to do with Tyler as the person who he is in life uh, I don't think people fully appreciate just the lightning in the bottle that Tyler captured on Hannah Brown season he, you know he's a remarkably good looking guy he's a nice guy he's a ladies man these are all fine and good qualities to have mm-hmm. on we watched it through a lens of, again, Hannah Brown being the bachelorette, having all the power. So we watched that. And then, you know, Tyler and you had Luke Parker, you had uh, Jed and you had Peter. I would argue that realistically, even though uh, Tyler took second, he was probably like Hannah's fourth or fifth favorite. I say that and it's important because I don't think Tyler ever felt the pressure that Tana was ever really going to pick them. I say that with, with really? confidence. Yes. I think at the end he was like, eh, you know, sure. But I think it was always Jed, especially after Luke yeah. left. And I think that matters going in. Like you're just not worried about you. Like say what you want about whether you thought Greg handled it well. Like yeah. I believe that he in that moment was really falling in love and then handled himself very poorly as a result of not being in tr- in control of his emotions. Like it's not an excuse, mm-hmm. but I think that is the reality. I think where Tyler was always in control. So every time he talked to Hannah, we saw this guy who like knew what to say, was very charming, was always like about women empowerment. And that was always after we saw Luke Parker be an asshole, Jed carrying guitar yeah. and just, he looked f- fabulous. Yeah. If, if Tyler becomes the bachelor he is going to look like a major fuck boy and not because yeah he it's because well one like listen he's in the he's good looking he's in his 20s he's been dating going around and as he should right he's and so the 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 specific conversations he had with hannah about like all the right things to say but now he's the bachelor and now we're watching it through the lens of him having, having all the power and now it's going to be triggering to remind women of a guy who always knows what's to say and and Tyler it worked when he was only saying that one thing to one person it was mm-hmm. always Hannah making her feel better after she was sad about some bullshit she was dealing with but now you're going to see Tyler with all the power talking all these like charming, sweet things over and over to all these women, and it's gonna look like um, he's gonna be a major fuck boy. I and and then you're gonna have women who he sends home. We're gonna get in group text and talk a mad shit about yeah. Tyler, and we it's just I feel zero like, chance yeah, of him no. looking better. He should never. He should not. <laughs> if you're listening, don't fucking do it. And you're right because no, he there, has a huge platform. He has so much potential. Like, every yeah. woman in America, like every married woman who is like the audience of the bachelor that is their hall pass like tyler cameron is it so this will ruin their image of like he is perfection and he probably does have 
more than 30 women in his DMs that he could be talking to on a daily basis. But to to see it play out on a show, I feel like wouldn't... You're going to see it through a totally different he's, lens. He's, he's leveled up from that. Yeah, yeah and it would be interesting because, you know, it's still a tough world. I mean, it'd be interesting what... I haven't, like, talked to Tyler. I don't know what he's got going on, the opportunities. You can get lost in the rat race. You know, he, he has two years removed from the from the show. Mm-hmm. He's done done some other things. And he's going to have to find his thing because being good looking and the fact that he dated yeah. Gigi Hadid is only going to get him so far. And while popular, I could see him considering it because he's feeling less and like there's always like you get less and less of attention over yeah. and over. I don't know. I feel like he's going to just because of, like you said, lightning in a bottle. Of, the beginning of quarantine was really when him and Hannah were doing all the TikToks. Yeah. They created so much attention. And that's, you know, there was a lot of you know, entertainment, pop culture stuff that happened in that time frame that garnered a lot more attention because we were all sitting on our couches with nothing to do. So he's he's translated this into, you know, businesses, whatever. Um, and I could see him, you know, doing acting stuff. I could see him doing... If, if I were him, I would just bunk bunker down and take acting yeah. classes and improv classes yeah. and hosting classes and work. He's still young yeah. and get away from it all and like really try to he make is, something a very unique thing. opportunity. He's 27, 28, something right? Like, that, like yeah. he's, he's not 30 yet. So again, we're looking at someone who you're going to have to cast a lot younger. And if I'm being honest, like I don't know Tyler at all, but I don't think that he's ready to get no. engaged and married tomorrow. Yeah, If he's not asked to be the bachelor and he doesn't accept it. Yeah. I don't, and that's and that again, not a criticism at all. He, he may he, be, I don't know. He's you but. know, he's out there dating and yeah, I don't think marriage is on his like five year plan yeah. or two year and if it happens, you know, I could see. If you know, he wants to be bachelor in five years, if this show is still around, he would be the perfect bachelor. Yeah, maybe. We'll see what he yeah. does in the next five years. I just think people have to, like, we, think about how much we loved Peter. And I like Peter as a person, but we saw him totally different after his season. I don't think people fully appreciate just, like, think about how we saw Matt James before he went in and after, you know, like, our, like, yeah. it is really hard to go in looking, you know, Ben Higgins was the, and I was different because I was always starting in the bottom and I ended up looking better than I did. But, like, Ben Higgins was the last person who you saw only his best moments on The Bachelorette, fan favorite, and still remained a fan favorite afterwards. Yeah, like didn't have a fall from grace or a humanizing. The Bachelor yeah. needs a win. Like The Bachelor needs a really good lead who is going to marry the person that it's he gotta makes be Michael. Michelle, okay. though. It's, well, Michelle's no, going to be great. Bachelorette, Bachelorette is fine. Michelle. Bachelorette has, not <clears throat> not that they have the best track record, but they have a better track record than the men. Yes. And and so we need a, a win for the guys of the, the Michael A is like I, the I, only option, I feel I, like, I, for having that. Totally agree. Again, we all, we, we're watching it through different lenses. It, the show, this is different now. The show used to get away with casting boys. Even Sean Lowe was like a, a boy at the time. He, he said it of like he needed time to mature with Catherine yeah. after they got off the show. And we liked watching that. I think Bachelor Nation is watching it through a different lens with higher expectations of their men. And rightfully so. We want to see a guy who knows what he wants, who doesn't play games, et cetera, et cetera. And Bachelor, this is where they get themselves in trouble of not adapting to the times, is casting these like boys. Peter mm-hmm. lived with his family james and matt james had like literally never had a like uh, never been in love and so we're watching it and then we did hating these guys yeah. after the fact you know like and so yeah if you you know cast uh tyler who's just like hey listen i'm right now i'm just dating and i i, I everyone's gonna be like he it's going to be triggering yeah for a lot of people watching it and it would be a terrible idea for him you specifically, and I think when's, it's hard, but I totally agree. Michael, when's the last time that we had a lead that had a, a child of like bringing the kid into it? I, I know Emily Maynard Juan back Pablo. in the day, Juan Pablo, but the, Pablo. the kid wasn't on the show all the time. Like that no. was another thing. Like it wasn't. Yeah. I think with Michael, my fear is that uh, I think it would be his if he wanted it. I think that logistically, I think it's. Oh, Jason Mesnick. Oh yeah, Jason. That, yeah. yeah, that was that was a whole lot. I know, no one remembers that. I, uh, I'm the only one. <laughs> I, yeah, I, no, listen, I would. Lo- Michael's my choice. I think I think we could use a uh, what's that NBC show that everyone cries 
This is us. This is us. So this and us season of Michael, I'm fine with it. Yes, and I think he's mature. He knows what he wants. I think he could handle the pressures of being the bachelor, and Mm -hmm. I think he could have a chance of being just as likable. And if he's able to bring his kid on, because that was the the biggest point of like wanting to be. And I think that that would actually be really refreshing. Yeah, I totally agree. (laughs) I just don't know. I don't know if he will. I don't know if he will do it. Yeah. Um, did you see all of the, uh, all of the, there was one commercial for um, casting the senior bachelor. Oh, <laughs> they've been rolling those for yeah, a while. They've been rolling it for they a while. They must be having they've some trouble saying, with casting. We're looking for seniors. And then this specifically was, we're looking for a senior bachelor. I was like, so someone over 35, is that what you're looking for? <laughs> like, I think they mean like full, like no, full I know. 65. Yeah. Well, I think they, but you first saw it before the pandemic. So then they had to shelve it. Yeah. And then another game back to it. So like, a spin off. And they're always, ca- yeah. Like, yeah, can you think of anything gonna... more unsafe during a pandemic of like a bunch of seniors together <laughs> in the yeah. room? Um, yeah, I think that I I hope they watch it, and I uh, I hope they air it, and I yeah. think, yeah, I want to I want to see whoever the cast is the Bachelor, uh, a mature guy, which is like I I I don't like I don't you know Gray came on and talked about how he's not ready, like I could, who who I could see them considering Greg for all the reasons they've considered Bachelors in the past because they mm-hmm. like someone who I hasn't feel like figured himself out. I really I. I'm not a Greg hater by any means. I feel like he would need to go on a Bachelor in Paradise season or something to redeem himself before America would accept him as the Bachelor. Well, that's you could argue that because he's so polarizing right now, yeah. he actually would have an opportunity to redeem it. Re- redeem yeah. it. It could literally could be a season about like mental health and how you can work on yourself while falling in love. Yeah. They could lean into that narrative. I really want to learn how to communicate better. So yeah, that we don't and kind of own that. And, yeah. and like it's about that, which could be interesting. And he he at least would have a chance of like an arc where, you know, Andrew S. I don't know anything about him. There's a guy who seemed to like him. You know, it's like the Mike Johnson, like people are, will still bring up Mike Johnson and like Mike Johnson went to paradise and none of the women were into him. Mm. There's a reason why he's not being considered yeah. the bachelor. Now, I don't know anything about Andrew S. We all loved him. We saw his best moments. Katie wasn't that into him. So maybe he's just like not the guy who's like can be Katie the Katie liked that, him though. I mean, like I feel like he had that yeah. moment. No, but when she ran down and, and um, I don't know. She she tried to get him back and yeah. you know, like that was his moment. He's like, no, I left on a good note. Like I know that this is this is not how I I can't come back and then you dump me next week. Like that's not gonna play well. I just think he, that was some performing on Katie's part. Oh yeah. Uh, so I I would be I would love a season. I I loved Andrew S. Wait, were you saying that Katie was an actor? <laughs> I think she was doing some acting. Oh yeah. I mean, the lead, every lead has to, to a certain yeah, yeah, degree. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah. But that, that's actually a reason why I feel like because that was such a point of contention and it was brought up on After the Final Rose, would oh, America aware. be yeah. okay with Greg coming on in this role of Bachelor? Because even though everyone, every lead has to do some acting, has to do, it's a weird environment, it's called out mm-hmm. of like, he has acting training. Is he actually being real on this this season? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think if he if they named him, they would make much a big deal. I mean, I literally had taking acting classes before I was the Bachelor. It wasn't talked about at all. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I, I don't <laughs> also, see. Also, to I think you've said this before of like taking one acting class. You're not make, yeah, fucking like, yeah. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Most people who take acting classes are not great actors. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. So like I just I just think it's such a silly thing again that a bachelor nation will pick up on and like with with TikTok and the internet they run with these storylines yeah. and they give it the oxygen even though there's just nothing there. But you're right. And maybe people uh, who want to be out of the spotlight aren't on this show. Yeah. That's what at the end of the day that's what it is. So, so. I don't know who they're going to pick, but um, I still hope it's Michael. I It'll be too. May, it, it, my. I hope Michael, Joe, Greg, Andrew. I mean, I do think Tyler would be interesting, and I think it would get the biggest buzz. That but, would get the the most viewers. It would, yeah, definitely get the biggest buzz. But, but I think at the end, by the end of the season, it would be the same kind of like. Ugh, I really think it would. It would. 
I think fans would watch it with kind of like a this is not what I expected. Do now, you think they could change in in bringing on like a, a Tyler as the lead and then you cast people that are already have some sort of following in their own right? I don't think it has anything to do with it. I yeah. just think Tyler. I feel like that's the type of people that he's going to be dating. In Bachelor oversimplifies people. And in Bachelor world, Tyler's a fuck boy. I'm not saying Tyler's yeah. a fuck boy in life. He's just out there being a good looking guy dating in his prime. But mm -hmm. in Bachelor world, the reality is, and instead of like getting to see your best moments, he has to carry every scene and have every conversation, have that same conversation with 30 people, not just one. And he has the power and people will see that as a guy who knows what to say to women in the right, in, in the right situations. And I just think it, by the end of the season, you'll just be like, Ugh. yeah, you're not, you won't be rooting for him like you were before. Kathy. Yes. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on. Uh, you'll always have to, you're always invited back. Uh, please let the people know uh, again, where they can find you, what you're working on so they can uh, yeah. consume all your wonderful content. I mean, I've been working on some stuff. Hopefully, hopefully I can announce it soon. Um, really excited about it. But in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly, Kathy's with a C, and then on Instagram at Kathy Kelly. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate you tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, rate us five stars. We'll be back tomorrow with a great episode with CNCO. If there's nothing else, we will see you back on Wednesday. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick, especially if you're looking for some relationship stories and relationship advice, as well as our Wednesday interviews with your favorite celebrities and experts. See you next time.